Hi, and welcome back. This video is part of the free Blazor Crash Course. In this crash course, we build an actual Blazor WebAssembly application based on .NET 5. In this video, we will learn how to add static images to a Blazor application. We will use it to add a logo to the Finance Mentor application to make it look more professional. Hi. I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. In this crash course, we focus on Blazor web app development. This time, we add a logo to the Finance Mentor application. First, let's talk about how we can use images in a Blazor application. In the last part of this crash course, we learned that global CSS files are stored in the www root folder. Images can also be stored in and referenced from the www root folder. Let's create an images folder. Next, we add the image we want to use as a logo to the folder. I usually do that outside of Visual Studio in the Windows Explorer. Back in Visual Studio, we can see the image and the images folder of the www root folder in our client project. Now that we have the image in our Blazor project, we want to use it as a logo in the nav menu component. Open the nav menu component. On the second line, we have an anchor tag that shows our application's name on top of the nav menu component. Let's add the image to the nav menu component. We remove the name of the application and instead we insert an image tag as a child of the anchor tag and set its source property to the image name, including the images folder. That's it. Isn't it very simple how to add images to a Blazor application? Let's run the application. And there we have it. We have the logo in the top left of the application. However, as you can see, the layout is a little broken. Let's fix that next. We want to have a horizontal line from left to right and we want to move the menu items so that the first item isn't behind the logo. Open the main layout.razor.css file. In the top row selector, we change the height from 80 pixels back to 3.5 rem. This change makes our top row have the same size for the navbar and the content part of the page. Next, we want to move the menu items. Back in the nav menu component, we add a nav menu class to the div containing the menu items. Now let's add some CSS to define the nav menu class. Open the nav menu.razor.css file. In the nav menu.razor.css file, we add a CSS selector for the nav menu class and set the margin top property to 25 pixels. By the way, we are using Blazor CSS isolation here. If you are not familiar with CSS isolation, watch the previous part of this crash course to learn about CSS handling and CSS isolation in Blazor in great detail. Let's run the application again. As you can see, we fixed the issues with the page layout and now we see a continuous line from left to right, our logo on the top left and all the menu items are visible. That's it. Adding images as static assets to Blazor applications is simple. Because we already learned how to add images to our Blazor application, let's work on the Finance Mentor application to prepare it for the next episode where we will build a dashboard using a third-party user interface library. While earning money is fun, the reality is that we also have to spend money to survive. To keep things simple, we build the expenses part of the application similar to the existing earnings page. After learning so many new things in the last few episodes of this series, let's apply what we've learned so far and implement the expenses page. Let's start with the shared project. We add a new expense class. This data class contains almost the same properties as the earnings class. I'm going to copy and paste the content of the earnings class. Not everything is the same. We use other categories for the expense type. That's why we create another file called expense category. I prepared a snippet for the expense category enum type. 
let's continue with the server project. Again, this crash course focuses on Blazor web app development. I'll be going through the server side code quickly. First, let's create a new controller class and call it expenses controller. I paste another snippet with the definition of the get, post and delete methods. Similar to the earnings controller, we use dependency injection to resolve an expense repository. Next, open the sample data.cs file. I paste the add expenses repository method, which creates a memory repository for the expense data clause. We also add sample items to the repository. As the last change in the server project, we use the add expenses repository method in the startup.cs file to register the repository in the dependency injection container. Now that we have everything set up in the server project, let's work on the client project. Let's start by adding a new menu item in the nav menu component. I paste a snippet for the menu item. Next, we need to implement the page we reference in the href attribute of this menu item. We create a new razor component in the pages folder and call it expenses. For now, the page will look almost the same as the earnings page. Let's copy and paste the content of the earnings page and adjust the parts we need. First of all, let's change the routing address defined using the add page directive on the first line to slash expenses. Remember, this makes our page routable using the specified address. Next, let's change the title of the page on line 11. That's everything we need to change in the template for now. However, in the code section, we replace the earning type with the expense type and rename the fields. We also need to change the API address on line 71 and 94. Next, we need to implement the expense form component. Again, we create a new component in the components folder, name it expense form and copy the code from the earning form component over. Let's change the title on line 6 and the type of the enum type for the category selection in the component template. In the code section, we change the model type to expense model and we also change the API call on line 50. Next, we need to create the expense model class in the components folder. Again, we create a new class and name it expense model. We copy over the content of the earning model and exchange the type of the category property. Now let's start the application. As you can see, we now have a second menu item. If we click on it, we see the expenses page. You might wonder why I decided to copy and paste the expenses part of the Finance Mentor application and only make slight changes to it. I don't want to spend a lot of time building business code in this crash course. However, I want to show the different building blocks of Blazor applications and how efficiently we can create new components and use them to extend our existing application. There is almost no boilerplate code required to build and use components or pages. It is one of the reasons why Blazor also works great for larger code bases. This video is the sixth part of the free Blazor crash course. You learned how to add images to Blazor applications. You learned how to use an image within a Blazor component. You repeated how to create Blazor components and pages. In the next video of this series, we integrate a third-party user interface library to build a dashboard for the Finance Mentor application. Tell me in the comments below what you think of Blazor so far. Do you consider using it in a future project? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this free Blazor crash course and see you in the next video.